So, here is the session about JDBC, there are some, there is a series of demonstration will be followed after the learning so far the theoretical uh, concepts. So, first we will discuss about uh, regarding the my SQL server installation and after the steps of installation we will decide exactly how to access the my SQL server. Uh, initially we will consider about the console based accessing and then later on another session where we will demonstrate how the same can be done through JDBC driver. So, now let us have the demonstration about the MySQL database server installation in your own machine, right? It may be laptop, it may be PC. We will we are going to consider the installation in Windows system. However, the procedure and the steps basically invariance for any other systems to be followed. So, as a installation, the first step is basically to download the software as we have told that download the link that we have already given. So, this is the link the https then colon double slash dev and then uh, mysql dot com slash download slash. So, this actually is the link. So, if you just able to access this link then it will open a browser window where you can find mysql community downloads. So, we have just clicked the link and then we see that MySQL community server is there. So, we have to open the link and then you will find the installer basically as we have told that windows installer you have to consider here. So, this is basically archive a zip archive and depending on your machine configuration whether it is a 32 bit or is 64 bits you have to decide the correct uh, what is called the downloading uh, software for your download. So, that you have to ensure that otherwise your installation may not be a successful operation. So, assuming that our machine is windows 64 and we are just going to download the latest version of the mysql server which is the mysql 8.0 and then release 13.0. So, we are going to install it. So, here actually we have already pre installed it, it is in our desktop terminal and then. So, this, uh, this is the zip file. Uh, so, this zip file you should copy into some directory where you are uh, you want to install. Obviously, zip file uh, is a compressed one, you have to unzip the folder and then so it will basically give you all the installable file that is there in the unzip file. So, here as you see the, uh, the folder wh where we have uh, unzip the all components is mysql 8.0 then 13.0 and then win wall. So, this is the software basically we have right. We copy this folder into the exact location where you want to install as we are going to install into our C drive. So, we just copy this folder into our C drive here and we just rename the drive as mysql because we want to install this software as a mysql. So, we have done it mysql. Okay. So, our zip file contains lot of other executable bin, then data, then docs etcetera. So, you can see these are the basically zip uh, unzip uh, this is the total installable file it is there. So, this is the first step that okay downloading and then we have to uh, 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 copy the folder into the proper location and then we have to. Uh, so, this basically completes the downloading about it and then go to the command prompt. Uh, so, we have to copy the my ini file as we have already mentioned and that my ini file should be placed into the mysql directory. So, my ini file uh, the configuration which is there uh, that configuration uh, we have already mentioned in theory class we are typing the configuration that is required for the my ini file right. So, the, this is the syntax that you have to follow verbatim without knowing what exactly the things are there only the system can understand about the any file this is required for the initialization uh, so far the mysql server is concerned. So, mysql id then has installation directory then base di directory. So, it is b a a c d i r equals this is the base directory where you, our zip file is located uh, that is c colon then slash mysql slash within double quote and then 
data directory hash data directory data directory is equals to within d colon dash data. So, this basically backup file will be stored in this drive we have planned that all the backup file or data file will be stored in a d drive of this machine you can make uh, some other source location also no issue. Anyway, so the data file is created here in d drive we have created a folder there and there is in a c drive also you see in the mysql directory the data file is there this folder should be removed. So, we are removing this folder from here now. So, this completes exactly the um, uh, storing the files there now we have to run the program and to run this program you have to go to the command prompt and in the command prompt mysql go to the bin directory and there you type mysql d and then dash dash then console this is a command already we have mentioned the here uh, console that does initial <coughs> use right uh, initialize right ok. So, so once we press it so your system will take care about this installation of this program so installation is going on and then as you return to the command prompt and we have returned it to this and then localhost that basically the this machine is the host machine in this mysql server is there. So, we have completed the installation here ok. So, it is now installed now our next task is basically to change the uh, password. So, so we can do this thing again from the command mode. So, mysql minus u root and then minus p. So, basically user is root and then password it is basically asking the password. Uh, so, in this local machine and then you have to enter the password you can uh, type any password. So, in this case we are setting the password as the root password right ok. So, this is a local host password is basically as it is mentioned. So, this you have to give the password at the beginning. So, we are copying it and then pasting. So, we are giving the password however, we can change the password also for these things we can write the command alter uh, so we are just okay changing the user uh, user id login for this as alter user give this root we are giving the user name as root at the local host so this is the step that you should follow uh, user root ampersand local host. So, this is the command identified as root yeah. So, this is basically root is the log user id in this case enter So, there is some syntax error ok. So, now so, this is the correct syntax that you should follow in order to give the proper name of the user here you should note it this is very important and then once the user is there we have to set the password also. So, we should set the password here ok ok. So, here you see uh, alter user command. So, this is the user at the rate of local host identified as uh, this is basically the password. So, we set for this mysql server at the moment user id as root and password is also root. So, this is the uh, root uh, login and password for this one and now our mysql server is ready we can type exit command and to ok exit from this uh, setting then we will go for the class setting uh, class path setting or not ok. Now, so we have done it and then we can change the password this is the changing the password or what login with root password ok. So, now we are now our server is ready and now we are going to login to the server. So, for this login we have type the command in the mysql prompt you have to go mysql minus u root minus p is basically ask for the password to be entered. So, the root is the password and it is case sensitive. So, in the small letter you type root. So, it is given and then system has accepted this authorization check is passed. 
Now, once this authorization check is passed, that means MySQL server is now allow you to execute any statement whichever you want to run it, right. Okay. Now, we are going to first our step is that initially the server is prepared, however, there is no database, there is no table under this database. So, we should see exactly if there is any database at the moment in the server or not under your categories. So, absolutely there is not there. So, we first create one, this is the default database is there, but we have to create our own. So, now we are going to create one database of our own. So, create let it be test, database test. Now, so database test is created. Now, again if we try to create database test, it will give an error because it will not allow to duplicate uh, the test one. So, it is there. Now, if you can again create database test one, this is quite possible test one. So, it is ok. We can delete also if we want to remove this. Uh, so, databases if you see it will give you all the databases that is created. So, right now test and test one these two databases have been created. Now, these two databases under your own jurisdiction and inside these databases you can put as many table as you wish. Now, we are going to enter some table under the database test one. So, you, you have to make it active. So, let us use the command use test. So, this basically make the database currently is active. So, this is now current active database test. Now, whatever the command that will be you will be able to enter it now it will go to this test database actually. Now, let us first create a table. We want to create one table the name of the table that we want to give is Java course and then this table has four fields as we see role, name, marks and grade they are four columns actually. The first field role has the type integer we have to give this syntax the name varchar and then you can type in integer in capital letter or small letter absolutely no issue you can do whatever it is there. And then the second field is name it is basically string of 30 characters for this the syntax is varchar and then within brackets is 30 indicates that maximum 30 characters can be allowed to enter or that means, this is the width of the column and then marks is also type integer and then grade is also a character, but is of two characters only. And one more thing that you should insert that for the first field role we have declared the primary key for every database table there should be one field as a primary key there may be more than one field also primary key anyway no issue. But if it is a primary key then it should have all the entries are non null and all entries in any rows should be unique. So, you cannot allow it the system will not allow to duplicate entries in two rows for this value primary key which is defined. And then other is also you see marks integer not null this entry indicates that this entry has to be there whenever you insert some record into it no, no null values is allowed and great is the second and uh, at the moment there is no entry. So, so it is basically default is uh, no value it is there. So, we have entered it now you can show the table that we have entered. So, <coughs> show table you see ok. So, this is the yes the right now we have created one table called the Java course and this is the describe command short form is DESC if we type it it will basically display all the structures there which is there. So, as you see the four fields they are type and then null, null key is primary default is null also and there is no extra field and that is the total structure composition. So, far the SQL server is concerned maintain this metadata in its own repository. Now, so the data is created now at, at the moment this Java course table does not have any data. So, if we uh, use the command select star this basically the command is to retrieve all the records that is stored there in this database in this table Java course at the moment as it gives that empty set there is no elements there. So, now let us see how the record can be inserted into the table the Java course again which is under database test. So, there are commands like insert insert command can be one at a time or four insert commands can be also placed in the same command also. Now, we are typing only one command first ok. So, at the same time we have typed all the commands one by one anyway. So, it will execute. So, first insert 
into Java course value 0 1 Devasi 75 a. So, 4 records has been inserted and as you know all these record insertion will go into the appending mode. So, one by one it will be inserted. Now, if again if you see the show table or select star command and as you see the 4 records has been inserted. Now, I am again issuing one more insert command here insert into data into Java course value say 0 7 and then within double code name is Amit and then marks is 95 95 and then uh, grade is E x within double code all the string or var cat should be in the E x. Now, semicolon should be there termination of the command enter now ok it is successful now enter the data right as we see we can enter it here roll number is the unique key. Now, let us see again insert command as the primary key should be unique now what we are going to do we are to stopping the insert and then 0 7 again insert value 0 7 0 7 anand a n a n d anand anand then 85 oh, ok fine no problem. So, whatever it is there now if we want to do because primary key should be a unique one, but here as we have given this. So, it basically gives that error. So, so it should be different ok. Now, so this way we have added it and as we see at the moment there are 7 records entered into the table the name of the table data database table is Java course. So, this is the insertion command is there and also we have learned about the select command select star. Now, select star has the different other nesting and then uh, conditional base also. Now, here we want to execute the select command select name role from Java course. So, basically not the entire table, but only uh, the only two columns namely name and uh, roll number. Uh, it will be there as you see name is first role is there. So, in the order you will specify the field in that order it will basically uh, uh, get the data as you see the 5 records have been retrieved and there are 2 fields name and roll number has been there. So, again so select star indicates that all fields, but if you specify the name of fields explicitly only those fields will be selected and then. Uh, so, again the from select only the grades. So, if you see it will not display the name here yes, select grade from Java course as you see here right. So, it will only the particular field will be particular field that means column grade will be selected as you see ok. So, this one and this is basically the results that SQL server returns against a con command that you have given to it. Now, our next command that we are going to exercise is basically conditional. So, select star from the Java course with certain condition here suppose the condition that we are going to give that marks is greater than 80. So, that means, it will basically retrieve those records whose marks is greater than 80. So, this is the command that you followed and note that command should be terminated by a semicolon as you see out of all the records these are the two records only satisfy this condition and therefore, has been retrieved. So, this is the select with condition there are many other complex condition also can be fired. Now, let us see another condition that we are going if this condition does not implies to any record. So, then in that case it will return null. So, here is another select star from Java course where name here yeah, this is the command name like something that means, we want to have if any name is there for which any substring dot j e e is there. So, this is the command that we are going to write yeah. So, you see here within single quote there is a percentage j e percentage j e this means there should be any one name whose substring is j e e as it does not have any such name in this current record entry. So, it should return in uh, null actually yeah. So, it is empty set as it says that there is no uh, record which matches with this condition therefore, it returns empty sets. Now, next our commands is basically we can also retrieve the order 
according to some ordering may be ascending order or descending order based on the numeric field as you see we have the two numeric field uh, one is roll number and another is gray marks. So, let us see the retrieve the value of the uh, field based on the uh, ascending order of the number like. So, select star from Java course order by marks. So, that means, the marks field will be ordered in a ascending order. Now, the same thing also we can do in descending order in this case the command little bit we have to change order by descending order right. order by DSC right DSC but after the by DSC right by DSC D E S C then marks ah, so this is ok right we are facing some syntax error anyway so select start from Java course order by marks descending so this is this way you can see this display uh, the record in the descending order of the results. So, we have learned about the different composition there are many more select comma command is very complex also because nested select is also possible here anyway that we do not want to discuss at the moment. Let us proceed further now we will see exactly how a particular record we have learned about how to insert a record opposite to insertion operation is basically deletion we will see how a record can be deleted ok. So, we have to first discuss update. Let us see exactly how a record can be updated here. So, we will discuss about the update command. Yeah. So, update is basically Java course, we have to update the table and then to update it we have to give some condition that okay, what is the basis of updation and which value needs to be updated. So, here is the command update Java course set, we have to just change the value the field name and we have to change the value of this field by Devasis where name is equals to Devasis. So, it will find if any entry for the field name is equals to Devasis it will change Devasis as a different spelling. So, this one enter now it is done now if we show the table select star. So, you see the in earlier case select star from right Java course Yeah, as you see the this thing has been changed. So, uh, like this anything for example, suppose you want to change the marks who got 75 or more we want to make it as a 80 or side like. So, here again we are going to change it update Java course set marks equals to 80, 80 where marks equals to 70 marks is greater than 75 that is all marks is less than 75 rather. So, you can understand what is the meaning. So, all the marks will be uh, right. So, it is changed one change has been done as you see those are the 75 above had been changed and this update is basically permanent that means, one you do, do it. So, it is basically permanent forever. So, this is the one another updation is set marks equals to 85 grade x where name equals to Devasis we want to change this. Yeah, so, we are just going to change it that ok update another update command as you see we are issuing another update command update yeah, second update right yes yeah. So, as you see here update java course set marks equals to 85 grade is equals to x we are changing the two fields where name is devasis earlier devasis marks is 75 a now after this updation you will see marks will be 85 grade is there.
great ok right as you see this has been updated now ok fine so now so update is there next our statement that we are going to discuss about delete delete operation so delete means basically if you want to delete a record it is again again physically deletion that means it will remove forever here we are issuing one command delete from java course where marks equals to 80 uh, marks is less than 75 ok fine. So, we are deleting the marks there is no entry which satisfy so no deletion is there now we are just giving the command marks is less than 85 ok. So, here we can see two rows has been deleted after deletion if we see the table entry we will be able to see that this is the table actually there which basically is there deletion. And so, delete if we issue the delete from table the entire table will be deleted uh, delete from java course. So, this means it is permanent three rows where the present it is there. So, it is deleted the set is empty. Now, we can permanently remove yeah so tables as we see only one table java course is there. Now, the entire table also can be deleted whether it contains data or not it absolutely does not matter for this the command is drop table. So, here you have the command drop table the name of the table. So, this one basically completes this one now if you show data then show tables as you see there is no tables in this database. Now, the database also can be deleted as you have the current database test right it can be deleted no ok anyway. So, as you see there are few some st uh, uh, SQL statement how they can be executed after the successful installation of SQL server. Now, we have done about the SQL our SQL installation is ready it may be here in the currently local machine, but the, the same can be installed in a remote machine also if it is installed in a remote machine. So, you have to you have to note the IP address of the same machine and then using this concept you will be able to connect to this, but this connection is through JDBC driver. So, that will be discussed in our next session. Thank you.